But he's born into rural poverty. His dad is a cobbler, which he shares in common with Stalin, in fact. He himself is a Fourier. And he says, you know, that it's only the Russian Revolution and the social mobility that is opened up by um, the overthrow of the Tsarist regime and then industrialization under Stalin that propels him with his own kind of extraordinary kind of individual talents right to the top of the Russian state, as well as becoming one of the most important generals of the 20th century. And he says this very explicitly. So there's a quote from his memoirs that I just want to quickly read out. This is Jeffrey Roberts talking. Zhukov ended by recalling his boyhood, noting the decisive impact the Russian Revolution had in transforming his prospects as a young man, offering him, and this is Zhukov talking now, the opportunity to live in a completely different way of life. A vivid, interesting life full of exciting experiences and important deeds. I wanted to say it only because it seems so strikingly simple and modest in its account of how he understood his kind of personal direct relationship to the Russian Revolution. Hello, dear friends and most intimate circle of the BungaCast subscribers. This is the BungaCast Reading Club, where we read and discuss uh, the books and essays that we feel are necessary to understand our world today. Thank you for being with us. I'm Alex Oculi in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and we are also George Hoare in London and Philip Cunliffe in Canterbury. Hey. Hey. So uh, this is the very last one of the first set of this year, I suppose. Um, We discussed or we have been discussing in this reading club, uh, along three lines, three different themes. Um, And these are going to change. We're going to announce this uh, shortly, um, but just to trail, this will be the last one of Russia, past and present. Um, We are going to be discussing Stalin's general, General Zhukov, um, which Phil will tell us about in just a second. Um, But we have also discussed a bunch of other stuff on Russia because we've discussed... um, Deutsche, Stalin. Ah, yeah. Ah, Stalin, yeah, because of Stalin. Stalin again, yeah. Um, he's quite, an important, quite he keeps, an important guy. Maybe you've heard of him. that Stalin yeah? guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, surprisingly for some reason. Um, but yes, so we uh, we we discuss a bio- Isaac Deutscher's famous biography of, uh, of Joseph Stalin and um, also a book about post-Soviet Russia, um, which I introduced. Um, we're going to put that to one side, but we are going to continue discussing the rise and fall of nations uh, in the forthcoming period. I hope you can all be excited about and join us for discussions on Eric Holmsbaum's uh, interpretations of nations and nationalism, as well as Ernest Gellner's two kind of landmark key studies of um, the rise of nations and nationalism. And which one comes first? Um, Which is always a big question. Do nations create nationalism or do nationalism create nations? Um, And indeed, how do they relate to states? Very excited to do that. Uh, We are also going to continue our discussions of intellectuals and the masses. Uh, We are going to be discussing Ivan Illich's tools for conviviality. Uh, Ivan Illich is a writer, thinker, uh, philosopher who um, I think is kind of coming back in vogue. And so we want to figure out what that is about. And hopefully you'll join us in, in learning about that. Um, and we're also going to be discussing uh, the history of capitalism. Um, we're books by Wolfgang Streich, uh, who is uh, very much still still with us, uh, as well as uh, two who uh, two authors who are not, uh, Arno Meyer's The Persistence of the Old Regime, a really landmark uh, history book, uh, and uh, Ellen Meekson's Woods, The Pristine Culture of Capitalism. I'm very excited to be doing all of these things, big, big ideas, um, big stuff on kind of the origins and the development of um, structures <laughs> of contemporary society. Anyway, um, enough blather from me. But first, uh, just to deal with your questions from the last reading club, as always, we want this to be a dialogue. Hi there, friends. This is the end of a sample from an episode available only to subscribers at patreon.com slash bungacast. For $7 a month, subscribers get at least four original exclusive episodes a month, featuring Alex, George, and Phil, as well as our regular contributors, Alex Gurovich, Amberly Frost, Catherine New, and Lee Phillips. 
We've got episodes on current affairs, extended interviews, exclusive episodes on theory, history, culture, docu-series, analyses of film, and our responses to listeners' questions and criticisms. And for $12 a month, you also get access to the very special BungaCast Reading Club, where we present the key books and essays necessary for understanding the world today, how we got here, and where we might be going. Of course, if you just want to try us out, there's also a $3 entry tier giving you one exclusive episode a month. We do hope you'll join us. These are turbulent times, and ideologically confused ones as well. We tried to find some political clarity so that we might move beyond the age of Bunga Bunga. Yeah, yeah,